Everybody praise the Lord. Thank you very much, uh, Methodist minister. You must understand that there is Methodist inside my blood. As I became born again, just a few years after, somebody introduced to me all the writings of John Wesley. And um, that time, you know, much, much younger, I read Wesley like I studied mathematics. I buried myself. Well, my church, local church, where I was born again, um, was not Methodist, but Methodism. Wesley, they have changed, organized my life, impacted my life. And when a Methodist minister introduces me, not even if he doesn't read Acts 17, 26, if he just calls my name and says, William, come, I beg. Everybody praise the Lord. Father, we well, thank you today. Whatever you need to impart, inject into every life, every heart, do it today in Jesus' name. Amen. That Lord, every minister here, every brother, every sister, every professional, every young person, Lord, you will so do something in our lives that will never be the same again in Jesus' name. Amen. You've been with us at the crusade. You've been with us at the minister professional conference. Now be with everyone individually. Yeah. As if this is the first time we're hearing your word. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. And confirm your blessing upon every life in Jesus' name. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have done it. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. Amen. You understand? You know what? Your amen today is higher than when we started. Yeah. God bless you. You can sit down. We're coming to a message that cuts across every denomination, that cuts across every segment of the church. When Jesus said, on this rock, I build my church. I build my church. Uh, the church was not segmented. The church was not, you know, one there, one there, the other one there, and then sometimes opposing each other. But on the rock, he builds his church. And we come to that situation today where God will build you up. <laughs> build your local church and build the assembly and build the whole church globally in Jesus' name. Yeah. We're well, looking at Isaiah chapter 55, verse 10. It says, For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the whole earth, watereth the earth, it says, and it maketh it bring forth, and but it says that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Look at verse 11. In verse 11 it says, so shall my word be. So shall my word be. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return it shall not return void but it will it shall accomplish that which i please it shall accomplish that which i please and it shall prosper 
in the thing whereunto I sent it. I'm talking about the Bible today. Freshness and fullness in the Bible for you. Freshness for you. Fullness for you. Fruitfulness for you. Everything you need for life and ministry, everything available for you today in the Bible. Where is your Bible? I said, where is your Bible? The book contains what you need for spirit, for soul, for body, for life, for family, for the work of your hand, for the thought of your hand, everything, all the grace you need, all the power you need, all the strength you need, all the promises you need, all the provision you need, and all the sustenance you need. That book in your Bible contains everything. The freshness we have and the fullness we have in the Bible for me, for you, for everyone. And it's like the rain that comes from heaven. The Bible comes from heaven. And it comes to the earth. The Bible, the word of God comes to the earth. And then it waters the ground. And the Bible, the word of God waters everyone, refreshes everyone, renews everyone, fructifies everyone, makes us bear fruit. It shall not return to me void. The promises of God will not return unto him void. The power of the Lord revealed to us in the Bible will not return to him void. It shall accomplish whatsoever, everything that the word of God has said, and we will bear fruit. Amen. You will bear fruit. Amen. Uh, you know what I've observed? That when the rain falls, when it falls in Ghana, it does the same thing as when it falls in Nigeria. When the rain falls in Africa, it does the same thing it does in America. When the rain falls in Asia, it does the same thing that it does in the Pacific, the word of God, the rain that comes from heaven. That's why we have the fullness and the freshness and the fruitfulness in the Bible for you everywhere, wherever you are. Three points we're looking at. Number one, number one, the Bible was that basic instruction before living earth. That's the Bible. When you spell it out, B I B L E. It is basic instruction before leaving earth. Number two, the Bible is blessed, inspired book, lifting everyone. No matter where we are, no matter where we're ministering, this book, the Bible, is the blessed, inspired book, lifting up everyone. Number three is the Bible. The Bible is the boundless instructor bestowing limitless experiences. The Bible, when you have the Bible, you open the Bible, you are about to be transformed. You are about to be changed. And every promise you read there is for you. Every provision you read there is for you. Every word you read there is for you. Every assurance you read there is for you. And I thank God you are here this morning. Yeah. The Lord is going to bless you be beyond your imagination. Yeah. We're looking at number one. Number one, the Bible is basic instruction before leaving earth. You see, we're in this world now. And we're preparing for the next world. What manual shall I read before leaving? You want to go to another country. You're traveling to another country. Do you know the language of the people there? Do you know the culture of the people there? Do you know the towns there? Do you know the situation there? Do you know what way you will live over there? You cannot just, you know, pack your load here and go there and say, where are you going? You say, I'm going to this country. What do you know about that country? Nothing. Now, we're going to another that country. That country is called heaven. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. But I go to prepare a place for you. And when I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. And he's coming for you. Yeah. 
and he's going to take you to himself. But what do you know about that place? That's why we are given the Bible. The Bible is the basic instruction that God has given us before leaving earth. In John chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 39. John chapter 5, verse 39, it says, Search the scriptures. It didn't say, just look at the scriptures. Just put that Bible under your pillow. Just put the Bible under the desk. Just put the Bible in your room. Have one Bible in your sitting room. Have another Bible in your living room. Have another Bible in your chamber. And have Bible, Bible everywhere, but never open. It says, search. Search the scripture. It says study. Study the scripture. It's telling you that you also, you examine the scriptures. When you have the Bible and you open it, you study and study and study. Study to show yourself a man approved of God. A man that rightly divides the word. In searching the scripture, we also expose ourselves to the scripture. And we expound the scriptures unto ourselves. In searching the scriptures, we admire the scripture. We accept the scripture. We say, that is mine. That is what the Father has written to me. It's a letter written by the bridegroom to the bride. And you study it, you examine it, you expose yourself to it, and you accept everything that it says. Repeat and read it and read it and read it again until that word that the Heavenly Father has sent, until it goes to every marrow, every bone, and your brain, and your blood, and your heart, and, and you are such written with that word read it and read it and read it again and then confide in it let it build your confidence and let it build your heart that you know lord i thank you this word I study, this word I examine, this word I accept, this word I research and read again, this word I conform to it, and this word you hurt him, you hurt him, you hear and hear, and you are never tired of hearing. That's what it means, search the scriptures. It says, for in them you think you have eternal life you know when you read that word think in the english language you say you assume but no in the original you say you assuredly have eternal life and they are they who testify of me the scriptures they are the things the word that testify of me. Many people can read Genesis and never find Jesus there. But Jesus is there, the seed of the woman that will bruise the head of the devil. They read Exodus, they don't find Jesus there, but he is there. He is the lamb whose blood was shed, is depicting him. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Many people read the Leviticus and they don't find Jesus there. But we see Jesus there, that the blood that is given for the atonement of the sin of everyone. They read the scriptures, they don't find, um, you know, in numbers, they don't find Jesus there. But Jesus is there as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. Even so shall the Son of Man be lifted up. So so that whoever looks upon that uh, brazen serpent, he'll be holy. Read it, tell me they don't find Jesus there. But Jesus said that a prophet like unto you. Well, I raise up like unto you, I'll put my words in his mouth. And whatever he says, that's my word. The scriptures, search the scriptures, study the scriptures, expound the scriptures, accept the scriptures, read it and read it again, confide in the word there. Let it build your confidence and your courage and hacking and hacking and hacking. Because if you do and you're hacking and you do what you are hearing, it says, I'll put no disease upon you. Amen. Because I I'm the Lord that he let you go through and it says so the scriptures. Look at Luke chapter 16. We're looking from verse 24. In Luke chapter 16 verse 24, it says, And he cried and said, Father, 
Abraham. Uh, that, that's uh, the man, the rich man that died before leaving the earth. He did not have any basic instruction. He had instruction to make money. He had instruction to raise up a good company and a good corporation. He had enough to build a good house for himself. He had enough. He studied and studied. He had servants. He had everything. He even had a dog that, you know, would bark and, and look at everything. He had basic instruction on having everything. But before leaving the earth, he didn't prepare. He didn't have any basic instruction. He got there now. Then he saw Abraham on the other side. And he saw Lazarus on, the, on that side too. And he said, Father Abraham. He called him Father. <laughs> My friend, it's too late. It's too late. You know, the time, there's a time to study. There's a time to find out. There's a time to have the basic instruction before leaving the earth. But now over there, he said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. My friend, you know, the people who are good instruction, basic instruction, they came and they came running and they said, Jesus, have mercy on me. They saw a Phoenician woman here on earth, have mercy on me. The blind man, have mercy on me. But this fellow, rich man, rich man, he didn't have basic instruction before leaving the earth. When he got to the other side now, what he should have said when he was here on earth, he didn't say, have mercy on me and the saint Lazarus. Saint Lazarus. But I thought you knew Lazarus when you were here. Lazarus was there on the ground floor. He was there on the, you know, maybe on the wherever, and uh, you know, Lazarus was he never invited Lazarus up. What do you have? Uh, you are living, you appear joyful, you appear happy, and it appears that even though you are poor, and you are not even able to get the crumbs that is one because the dogs will come and they lick your wounds. What do you have? You never ask any question, but now, over there, when it was too late, he said, Saint Lazarus. Ah, so you know an evangelist. Why didn't you send for him? So you know a preacher. Why didn't you send for him? So that he can give you basic instruction before leaving out that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this land. Verse 25. In verse 25, but Abraham said, Son. Son, 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 sons of Abraham that did not have the stage of Abraham, the faith of Abraham, the obedience of Abraham, the fellowship with God of Abraham. They didn't have the interaction, the intimacy with Abraham. He called him son. <clears throat> he said, remember that thou in thy lifetime receives thy good things. The good things of earth, you so study and you so develop yourself that anywhere you went, people say that man is a man who has developed himself, he's grown himself. That man is a man of letters, is a man of Possession is a man of everything good, good things. It says, and likewise, Lazarus, evil things. <laughs> That's how they look at us who go to church. That's how they look at us who believe in Christ. That's how they look at us. It says, so heavenly minded that is of no earthly good. We can't put him in politics. No, he doesn't have political knowledge. We can't put him in school. He doesn't have academic knowledge. We can't put him even on the farm. He's still farming with the tools our fathers used one, uh, 100 years ago. He doesn't know mechanized agriculture. Huh? He is poor. But you know, the man was reading the word and knowing the word. He was having basic instruction before leaving us and when he left everything changed he became so rich and he became so comfortable that the rich man everything also changed for him he was rich here poor over there he was knowledgeable here 
ignorant over there. He was so comfortable here, tormented over there. And now he's saying, Abraham is saying to him, Lazarus is a simple thing, but now he is comforted and thou art tormented. In verse 26, it says, and besides, all this, this instruction should have had before leaving earth. That once a tree falls in the place where it falls, that's where it will remain. It should have had this basic knowledge before leaving the earth. That once somebody goes over to the other side, his stage is fixed forever. He didn't know that because he didn't have basic instruction before leaving the earth and beside all this between us and you there is a great gulf fixed so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot the evangelists here they come to heaven and they see up the message but as a great gulf the evangelists cannot pass to those people and give them the gospel. They are teachers of the word here, and they have come to heaven. They teach, they taught the word, but now this is not the period of teaching. Now they taught in the world. When they were in the world, they cannot pass on to you now and come and be your teacher. There are prophets there, there are apostles there. They are on their side now with him, Abraham's bosom, but they cannot cross over unto you. They did that when they were on the earth to give you basic instruction before leaving the earth. Now you have let all who leave the world, no basic instruction because there's no change. There's nothing they can do now. And the people cannot pass to you neither. Can you pass on and come? Hence, in verse 27, verse 27, then he said, I pray thee, therefore, if I'm lost, I'm lost forever. I pray, I have one request. If I cannot cross over to Abraham's side, if I cannot cross over to heaven, all right, I have one request. Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house, to my father's house, rich man, when you are here, did you love them as you loved yourself? Did you have basic instruction on we're going up yonder? And I want to take as many as possible of my father's house. I want to take them along with me. Did you have the idea going into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature? Now, he wants to be a friend of his people and give them the gospel now. And he said, I'll Whatever it will take, St. Lazarus, did you put aside any amount of money? I was, I was sponsor an evangelist, I was sponsor a teacher, and I will send them where I cannot go, and I will send them to preach the gospel. He didn't have that basic instruction before leaving the earth. Now it's going to be a financier. Now it's going to be a good-natured person. Send him to my father's house. In verse 28, it says that for I have five brethren, and that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Look at verse 29. In verse 29, Abraham says unto him, they have Moses and the prophets. What does that mean? They have Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. They tell me they have Moses and they have the prophets. They have Isaiah, they have um, Jeremiah, they have Ezekiel, they have the book of lamentation, and they have uh, Osea, they have uh, Micah, and they have uh, Jonah, and they have Joel, and they have Malachi. They have Moses and the prophets. Let them read those books and let them have the basic instruction before leaving. Uh, Abraham says unto him, they of Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. In verse 30, in verse 30 it says, and he said, nay, you know, rich men, you 
you always argue. I know it. Nay, Father Abraham, what you said, can I put some correction on that? Can I put some comment? Can I underline something there? You see, rich man, he was used to, you know, arguing, go this way. Nay, there's a better way. Go that way. No, there's an expressway. Where have you been living? You didn't know that expressway had been constructed. That's, nay, nay. Cancel that nay out of your mouth. Amen. When Moses speaks and you read the word, don't say nay. And when the prophets speak, don't say nay. And when Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, the word personified. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory of the only begotten of the Father is full of grace and full of truth. And when that word personified in Christ, when he speaks to you, don't say nay. You will not say no. And he said nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. Look at verse 31. And he said unto him, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither well, they persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Uh, I know some people, they abandoned the Bible, they abandoned this basic instruction. Before leaving, uh, there's a pamphlet they carry about. They said somebody died, and then he saw mama so-and-so on this side. He saw papa so-and-so on that side. And maybe your relative, you know, this book, I'm giving you this pamphlet. And they read that and read that. They never read the Bible to have the basic instruction before leaving. And, but all those uh, people, they died, they saw this, they saw that. That's what they're carrying them through. Throw that away. Come back to the Bible. Yeah. I said, come back to the Bible. Yeah. Tell me, what's the Bible? Yeah. Say that again. Yeah. And by the grace of God, you'll get that basic instruction. That basic instruction contains ye must be born again. That basic instruction contains that the truth sanctifies us, purifies us. If the basic instruction we have that makes us to prepare for heaven. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27. It says, as it is appointed unto man once to die. Read that. Study that. Accept that. Expose your mind so that whatever you are doing, wherever you are going, whoever is there with you, whoever is not there with you, study, understand. It's appointed unto men wants to die. And then you say, but after this, we don't die like an animal. And then go back and nothing happens after that. The end of earthly life is the beginning of another life in eternity. Read that, study that, understand that, and have that basic instruction. There are people that go to read, they go to study Hebrew. They go to study Greek. They go to study Latin. They go to study the ancient languages. What do you need that for? This one is basic instruction. You don't have to go and study all those ancient languages. It's in your hand. The word of God. Read this. It has enough information for you to get saved and to get sanctified and to get spirit filled and to get so empowered and strengthened by the Lord that you walk and you are not weary and you run and you are not fainting. Read it. It is appointed unto men once to die. But after this, the judgment I say. Chapter 34, I'm reading from verse 16. I say, chapter 34, verse 16, Seek ye out 
the book of the Lord. Seek it out. The book of the Lord. Seek it out. The book of the Lord. Do you have one? Then having one doesn't mean you sort it out. The word. Open it. See what it says. Read it. See what it says. Understand it. Don't just, I read five chapters today. Uh, that's not enough. It's the word you understand. It's the word you apply. It's the word you believe. It's the word you practice that will bring the life of heaven on your life. Even today or not, search out the book of the Lord and read and read and read there are preachers who only you know open the bible when they are going to prepare a message for others my brother my sister don't you take good food do you only prepare good food for other people balanced diet for other people don't you take that yourself are you going to be so um, anemic and you're so weak you know where it is what you're even preparing for other people we preachers must reach we preachers must understand. We preachers must apply the word of God to ourselves first before we give it to other people. Here they say that an that man is a great, great preacher. I want to see how much of the food he himself is eating. That sister, that um, lady minister, oh, she's fiery. She is so wonderful. And when she comes like this and takes that Bible and begins to explain, wonderful. I appreciate such uh, women leaders and ministers, but I say, dear sister, dear mother in Israel, do you eat part of the food that you give to other people? Search out the book of the Lord and read no one of these shall fail give me a good amen. amen no promise of this book shall fail amen. and not any provision in this book will fail it says none shall want her mate what does that mean none shall want her mate the promise is the mate to the power the power, the promise, they are coupled together. They are joined together. And one shall not lack after the other or before the other. The promise you read as the power to follow, the power will do it in your life. And it says, none of these shall want her mate, for my mouth it hath commanded, and his spirit it hath gathered them. All these, the Spirit of God gathered them together. Old Testament, New Testament, the Spirit of God gathered them together. The historical part, the prophetic part, and all the details, the Spirit of God gathered them together. The people that God used to uh, put all these things together, they lived in different centuries. And many of them did not know each other. Moses did not know David. And David did not know Joshua. They had gone before David came in, but it wasn't Moses, it wasn't Joshua, and it wasn't uh, David, it wasn't Isaiah. It's the Spirit of God that gathered everything together, and there's no contradiction. Think about Moses that lived many, many centuries before John the Beloved love that wrote um, revelation and you find unity you find organization and you find what um, you know if they speak on the same subject they never contradict each other even though many centuries separated them you know why because the spirit gathered them the scriptures together bible basic instruction the four living earth. Number two. Number two, we're looking at Bible. The Bible is blessed, inspired book. Lifting everyone. Blessed, inspired book. Lifting 
everyone now those of us who have taught in schools or who are still teaching why do we change our textbooks because the textbooks i used 60 years ago i go to secondary school now and they have changed the textbook why and those of us who have studied many of the science subjects and whatever the textbook they used 50 years ago they've changed them why because they are not up to the level of the knowledge in the world today and those books will not serve anymore and if our students who, go to, who are still in school if they use the same textbooks that we their parents use they will not pass any external exam there's an external exam when we leave this world and the exam is not here it's external it's you know in eternity and then you'll ask us about this about this about that what textbook would we say we have read and studied is the unchanging textbook is the bible is the inspired book the word of god and since god is still ever the same god is not evolving god is not improving so there is nothing to improve in his word the knowledge he has now he had that knowledge before the creation of the world and the word he gave he gave in that knowledge eternal unchanging unadjustable immutable he says i am god i change not so he doesn't have to edit his bible he doesn't have to improve on his bible it is the same word of god the blessed inspired book lifting everyone you understand where we africans were many many centuries ago you understand how they killed the twins you understand how they have all those taboos all the superstition and everything they were what they were what in the darkness of our culture and then what changed everything white man no white man what did the white man come to do they came to gold coast and were looking for gold but with the gold they were looking for in gold coast they also gave us what did they give us where is the bible here i said where is the bible they gave us the bible was well, see their property no God gave us the book before they became a nation. And that book is the inspired book lifting up. At least we can tell it lifted up the Gentiles. It lifted up the Africans. It lifted up the people in the village. I get to the village, I see a church there, and I'm sure there's a Bible on the pulpit there. They are lifted up. And the Bible is translated to our language. To our language. I don't understand English. That's not an excuse anymore. If, the, if Chui is the only language you understand, there's a Bible there. Every culture, every, every, every language, people, group everywhere the Bible is now in our hands and this Bible will lift up everyone yeah. it's the blessed inspired book lifting everyone in 2 Timothy chapter 3 I'm reading here from verse 16 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 all scripture is given by inspiration of God and he is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness look at verse 17 it said that the man of God the woman of God may be perfect give me a good amen there yeah. how can I say I cannot be perfect when God's inspired word says he gave me the Bible so that I will not remain in my imperfection it says all scripture 
given by the expression of God is profitable. And it says that the man of God and the woman of God, any man of God in the house, any woman of God in the house, the intention of God in giving you that Bible is that you will be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. He wants us to get to heaven. He wants us to live with him. And because of that, he gives us the tool. He gives us the instrument. He gives us the instruction that if we follow that instruction, it says kneel and pray. We'll follow that instruction. It says examine your life. We'll follow that instruction. It says repent. We'll follow that instruction. It says turn around. We'll follow that instruction. It says believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. We follow that instruction. It said blessed are the pure, the pure in heart for they shall see God will follow that instruction it says except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees ye shall in no wise get into the kingdom of God will follow that instruction it says come 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 unto me and I will make you whatever God has created you for amen yeah. He gives us that instruction. And what do we do now with that inspired book? It tells us in Job chapter 23, and I'm reading from verse 12. It says, neither have I gone back from the commandment of his mouth. Fire came and burnt the farm, neither have I gone back from the commandment of his house. And then the walls and the house fell upon his son. All the same, whatever happens, this is earth. Heaven is coming, neither have I gone back from the commandment of his house. The people that couldn't talk to me before and they respected me when everything was fine, now they look down on me, now they accuse me, now they say this and that all the same neither have I gone back from the word of his mouth look at my body it was smooth but now boils came all over and I sleep on, and I lie on the ashes and I'm scratching myself all the same in whatever condition I find myself neither have I gone back from the commandment of his mouth the wife said Cause God and die. What are you living for? We cannot get together again. Look at where you are. Neither have I gone back from the word of Israel. My friend Saul came and accused me. Job, you're doing something hidden. And you're living in hidden sin. That's why you are in this condition. But neither have I gone back from the commandment of his mouth. That, that's what the Lord wants us to do with the word. The inspired book of God. That whatever we go through and wherever we find ourselves will be able to say neither have I gone back from the commandment of his mouth. I have esteemed his word, the words of his mouth, more than my necessary food. Job, tell me, if something happens and your food comes late, what do you do? Oh, he said, I go and read the Bible. While the food is delayed and they are preparing, because I esteem the word of his mouth more than my necessary food. What if you have the food and the meat is burnt and this one is burnt? Do you get angry? Angry? What? I have something better than the food. I have the word, the word of his mouth. And when this one is not coming, when this one is not coming, when this one is delayed, I have something higher, I have something greater, and I esteem the word of his mouth more than my necessary. What if you have a project, you have a vision, and that vision is being delayed? You want a help there, you want assistance there, and the assistance is not coming. What do you do? Do you get discouraged? It says, No, I have a book that gives me courage and grants me life and grants me excitement whatever thing i have on earth whatever thing i don't have i esteem the word of his mouth more than my 
necessary food. Underline that word necessary. Necessary. There are some things in life that are necessary. It looks like we cannot deal without them. And whatever age we are, and whatever situation we live in, even whatever profession we have, even though you are a pastor, you are a bishop, even though you are a preacher, there are some things that are very necessary. And the nature of man reacts negatively when those necessary things are not given and not granted. But Job said, what the matter with you? You have the Bible, you have the Word of God, and he says whatever is necessary whatever is essential but i cannot have them he says no problem because i esteem the words of his mouth more than my necessary food look at psalm 119 and we're reading from verse 11 psalm 119 verse 11 he says thy word have i heed in my heart that I may not sin against thee. You see, if there are people, uh, we have the Bible, of course, and somebody does something, and we don't like that, no problem. Somebody does something, we don't appreciate that. And we're saying, why has he done that to me? The problem now is that action, that sin, if you sin against you, that evil, we hide that in our heart. And we go about as if we never heard any verse of scripture before. And the thing we're thinking on, and the thing we're meditating on, what he did unto me. The insult he gave to me, the abusive language he used on me, the disrespectful thing he did, we hide that in our heart. You'll be angry. You'll be offended. You will think of what to do. You will want to retaliate because what you are hiding in your heart is their word, is their action, is their attitude. That's why we're seeing. That's why we say what we shouldn't have said. That's why we regret in our lives. I shouldn't have said that. I cannot tell a lie. I was angry. Why were you angry? Because you hid their action in your heart. Turn it around. Look at the word. And hide the word in your heart. You will smile. Yeah. But even if they put you on the cross, you say, Father, forgive them because they know not what they do. That's when you hide the word in your heart. And if you, if you can get going about and get this blessed, inspired book, it will lift you up. It will lift you up above anger above animosity it will lift you up above you know the normal action of people what they normally do you'll not be thinking of them you'll be thinking of the word of god the word thy word have i hid in my heart that i might not sin against thee look at uh, verse 105 in 105 thy word is a lamb Onto my feet. You, you know, sometimes we keep on walking and the light is becoming dim, and then the light of the sky is gone. We don't see the pit there, the pitfalls there. We don't see the crossroad there. We don't see another, another lion coming there. And when you and the lions are in a lion's den, you can't see everything around. They don't uh, put in the electric light there in the lion's den. But thy word is a lamb out of my feet, or wherever you are. In whatever dungeon you are, thy word is a lamb unto my feet and a light unto my path. It will be so for you. 
Look at verse 130. In verse 130, the entrance of thy word. Ah, wonderful. The word is in the Bible. It has not entered yet. The word is on the screen. It has not entered yet. But when the word enters, it enters not only the head, that's good, but it enters your heart. It enters your mind. It enters your thought processes. And now you can think and think and think only by the word. The entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding to the simple. I could tell you how simple. The word simple it doesn't mean that you are, you know, you're easy going. It means to the foolish. The word simple means the simple tongue. The people that know nothing. I came from the village. What did I know? I even went, uh, you know, to a primary school. They call it second. They call it Christian primary school. Uh, and then I went to, you know, church every time. And you know, at home, you know, our family, they read the Bible, read the Bible, read the Bible every time. But I'm surprised all those years, I didn't know the difference between epistle and apostle. They didn't know. Just simple. Just ignorant. I just a jolly boy going around. Going, I knew nothing. If you asked me, born again, I say born again, I'm born already. What do you mean if I've been born again? And eventually, the word of God entered. The word of God will enter you. Yeah. And now, life has become different. I go with the Bible every time. Everywhere. I read that Bible anywhere I am, or uh, in New York. And uh, the plane had delayed, and it canceled the flight many years ago. And uh, we're just sitting down there with a friend. We didn't know where we'll stay that uh, night. We didn't know whether we'll sit on the bench, on the chair there, at the you know, common hall for everybody. And so I brought out my Bible. And people are going and coming, people are going. I need to have the word, the word. It's the word that will stabilize me. It's the word that will make me not to think, why is this? What that? Why are we going to eat now? Why are we going to... It's the word that take anxiety away from me. It's the word that will take all the worry away from me. So I opened my large Bible and I was reading and reading and uh, not knowing what we're going to say. But somebody had made arrangement and knew that we weren't there. What others are worried about and they're already planning for me. Why am I worried? again about it. God says he does not sleep, he does not slumber. If he is not sleeping and is watching over me and is thinking of my problem, why do I worry? At the same time, worry will come out of your life. Yeah. And then uh, somebody came and said, teacher, and men mentioned my name. I taught him in the secondary school, and now he was in New York, and somebody that I don't contacted him, and here we were, and he found me reading my Bible. And he knew that's my teacher. When I was in the secondary school and was teaching me, and he had that SU group, and he was leading the SU group, he always read the Bible. Here in a new land, foreign land, and he doesn't know why he's going to stay today. He is still reading the Bible. And he said, his pastor sent him to come and collect me and my friend. And so I went there. And when we went there, I, when, you know, I was reading, the Bible was on my lap. And when we got into the car, I see held my Bible in my hand. And the pastor there, he never knew me before. He only knew me and he saw the Bible in my hand. And he said, can you preach? teach our Sunday school tomorrow morning because this was Saturday. I said, okay. Because you're always ready. Amen. I said, you're always ready. Amen. This book will get you ready. Amen. 
ready for every assignment, ready for every work, every good work, and ready for heaven. Amen. That's why I'm so happy being here. Amen. Because I have people around me that are getting ready for heaven. Amen. And um, I told you the other day, if I had my way, I cannot have my way. Lagos, Nigeria will not permit me to come and relocate here. But, amen. But all the same, I know if we miss each other for a few years here, who knows, your mansion might be beside my mansion of God. And forever and ever, the people I love in Ghana we shall live together forever in Jesus' name. Because the entrance of your word giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. In John chapter 17, verse 17. John chapter 17, verse 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. I never argue about sanctification, never, because he gave us the book, the inspired book that lifts up everyone. He lifts up the sinner to salvation. He lifts up the sage to sanctification. He lifts up the sanctified to being filled with the Holy Ghost. And every time you read the Bible, every time you hear the Bible read, every time the Word of God comes to us in a direct way, it lifts us up. You are lifted up. Yeah. You are lifted up. Above all the challenges of your life, above all the failures of the past, you are lifted up in Jesus' name. We come to number three now. It's still the Bible, boundless instructor, bestowing limitless experiences. That's the Bible. As we come to the Bible and read the Bible and understand the Bible and meditate on the Bible and apply the Bible and we live by that word, it gives us boundless instruction. It's an instructor bestowing limitless experiences on us. We're looking at Mark chapter 16 verse 20. Mark chapter 16 we're reading from verse 20. And they went forth and preached everywhere. They went forth and preached everywhere. Now, the preachers of this time were reading about him, Mark. They were not people that said, do as I say, but don't do as I do. These were people that actually received the word. They believed the word. They lived by the word. Every little jot, every little dot, they lived by the word. And this is the reason why they went and they preached everywhere. Jesus said, go into all the world and preach uh, the gospel. And he says, preach that to every creature. And he didn't modify it. There are people who modify the Bible. Once you modify it, it will not have the original power, the original spirit, and the original effect on your life. Don't modify it. Other people mutilate it. And they put this there and put this there. They are just saying they turn it around to suit them. I, I know why some of them do that. They do that because there's a particular weakness in their lives. There's a particular besetting sin in their lives. And if they read it like they ought to read it, then it will point at them, thou art the man, thou art the woman. And because they want to avoid that, they read it and then they turn it around and they, you know, go around, uh, you know, circumlocution and uh, they, they say, this is what it by the time they finish you don't get anything out of it anymore but the people 
in these passages we're reading, they went forth and they preached the word as it was given to them. No modification, no adulteration, and there, there's no editing. And because of that, it worked in their lives and it worked in the lives of the people they were preaching to. This word will work in your life. Amen. I have that settled conviction that everything the word of God has promised will be given unto you. Yeah. I have the sexual conviction that whatever, however weak you were in the past, this word is going to bestow unlimited blessing and experience upon you. People will see you and say, is that the man I knew before? You say, yes, the man, but I'm not like I was before. Is that the woman I knew before? Yes, I'm the same woman, but I'm not like I was before. This word will lift you up. They went everywhere and preached everywhere, and the Lord walking with them. The Lord walking with them. You cannot fail. The Lord walking with you. You will not finish the Lord walking out with you. You will not be discouraged. The Lord walking with you. And if you have, you know, come back home because of disappointments on the field and because of failure on the field, and you put your box down and you say, I'm going to now look around if there is farming, if I can have land from the chief of, you know, that local area, let me go and farm, come back from the farm. Amen. That farm is not your place. It's the place of discouragement. In the place you choose, okay, let others go and do it. Avant, no. You're throwing away the Bible. You're throwing away your calling. Come back. Thank God you have come back. Yeah. And everywhere you go and preach this word, it will not be like before. Yeah. The rain will come down. Yeah. Refreshing will come down. Yeah. Fruit will come in the labor of your hand in Jesus' name. Amen. And it says, confirming the word was signs following. Amen. Amen. For many years, I used to, you know, pony again and I read the Bible. But there are some things I didn't understand. What do you need to understand? I thought healing the sick was for the privileged ones. And so, if at that time somebody living with me had a little sickness, I will point him to so and so and such and such. They are the people that pray and God answered their prayer. Then I, I woke up. Like you are waking up today. Yeah. And I said, what's the matter with me? He is a child of God. I'm a child of God. And he talks to the father. And the father answers him. What's the matter with me from today? I'll talk to that same God, my father. And he will, talk, and he will answer my prayer. Yeah. And you know, once you say it like that, the test will come. And uh, so we went to a particular place, evangelizing. That I always, that one is simple. I always did that. But then we came across a woman whose uh, boy was lame, paralyzed. I can see them now in my mind. So I sitting down there, and I saw the woman running around the porch that is turned upside down. And, um, you know, the team, or went as a team, one of the team members said, let's stop her and pray for her and tell her and preach her. I said, no, don't do that. Don't be in a hurry. Let her finish. And so she finished running around the port and everything. And so when she finished, she said, good morning, madam. She said, good morning. I said, as if I didn't know what she was doing. I said, what are you doing? Oh, he said, I'm worshiping my God. I said, where is that God? He said, look at this, your God. I said, who is the mother of this child? He said, me, that's, that's my son. 
prior line sitting down there and you're yeah, running around the port and um, you know your child is still there i said if you come to my god he will heal this child the child will get up uh, he said if you do that and my child gets up i will throw away the idol I said, no, you throw away the idol first, and then I'll pray for the child. She said, please, 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 if I throw away my idol, and then you pray for my child, and the child didn't get up, what am I going to do? I've lost my God, and there's no healing. I said, madam, I am a teacher. My students don't tell me what to teach. I teach my students what they need to know. And so, the woman, understanding I'm a teacher now, you are teachers too. You tell them they will obey. Those idols will be destroyed before you. So, she picked up the porch and there was nothing under the empty, empty God. And smashed it on ground. When she smashed it on ground, listen, I looked at the boy. I didn't have to touch the boy because God will confirm your word. Yeah. I said, boy, in the name of Jesus, rise up. And the boy looked at me like this. I didn't even have to hold him. He got up. And I said, walk. And he began to walk. And the mother said, tell me anything, I will do it. And we gave her the gospel, and she received the gospel. Hold on. Born again. We said, we said where is your husband? And she said, he went to the farm. When will he come? He's soon coming back. We said, well, wait. And then we waited, and the husband came. And the husband saw the boy walking. And the boy, so proud of walking for the first time, demonstrated to the father and said, Father, Daddy, Daddy, look at me. I am walking. And then I said to the man, understand, it is not how I say it. It is not the vocabulary I used. What God put in my mouth is what I said. I said, man, your wife is now a new person. Your son, new. Look at him walking. I said, you are the only black leg in this house. <laughs> if you don't want to remain the black leg, a bad person among good people, you have to repent. He said, I'm ready. <laughs> and the gospel came to that man, and the man repented, and the man was born again. Yeah. That because I'm special? No, because I held to the word. And I preached the word, and the Lord walked with me. I want to announce to you that as you go anywhere, the Lord will walk with you. Yeah. I want to, let me say this way, prophesy into your life. Yeah. The word of God in your mouth will not fall to the ground. Yeah. Everywhere you go, the Lord will go before you. Yeah. While you are there, the Lord will be with you. Yeah. And as you are coming back, you'll be coming back with the joy of fulfillment and fruitfulness in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord has blessed you. Amen. The Lord anoints you. Amen. And you carry this anointing and the word everywhere you go. Amen. Did you see the you know, president the other time when he was coming? And the motorcycle rider rode like this and like this, cleared everybody out of the way because the president is coming. Yeah. Now, as you go, you're an appointed person. Yeah. 
You are a chosen person. You are not the president of the country. You are the president of this ministry where you are. And as you are going, the angels, like the riders, they'll go before you. They'll clear the way before you. And no demon ever will attempt. They dare not do that. Will attempt to touch you in Jesus' name. Because whoever touches you, touches fire. And now the tool is in your hand. The word is in your mouth. The Bible. The Bible. The Bible. Boundless instructor, bestowing limited experiences. Let's rise up and pray. You tell the Lord today, the Lord knew you were coming. You are not an accident. Here you are, and the Lord knows you are here. And the Lord has given you the Bible. With that Bible in your hand, the Bible in your heart, the Bible in your mouth, the Bible in your ear, the Bible on your eyes, the Bible in every step you take. There's no way you can fail. Don't think about the failure of the past. Failure is gone. Don't think about the discouragement of the past. All that is gone. The powerhouse of the Almighty God is now with you. You will succeed. Your ministry will blossom. This Bible will be your guide. This Bible will nurture you. This Bible will lift you up. Don't look down anymore. Look up. Look up. Look up. You're lifted. You're lifted. You're lifted. Personal problems solved. Family problems solved. Ministerial problem solved. Professional problem solved. This Bible is given to lift you up. Lift you up. Lift you up. Lift you up. To higher experiences greater experiences darkness has gone light has come weakness has gone strength has come the word has entered the word of promise entered the word of power entered. It's not because I'm a man, I'm a woman. Everyone that has the word, everyone that carries the word has the light, has the strength, has the power, has the fulfillment. I'm a child. Jeremiah, don't say that again. I'm a child. You will go everywhere I send you. And you will say everything I put in your mouth. You carry the anointing. You carry the anointing. You have the light, then the water, the rain that comes from heaven, and your life is refreshed. 
and your ministry is fruitful. And the fulfillment, the performance of every word you have heard, every promise in the book, every provision in the book, every commandment, every precept in the book is now for you. Brother, if you are the only one in this land, this land will be evangelized and brought unto the Lord. Sister, if you were the only one in this land with the word in your heart, the word in your hand, the word in your mouth, if you were the only woman, only believer in this land, this land will be evangelized. The Lord is committed unto you. You now commit yourself unto the Lord like that. Everything Christ did at Calvary is now put in your hand. Now put in your heart. Show gratitude and say, Lord, You've given me everything. I give back to you everything to you. And absolutely, absolutely surrender unto the Lord. He is for you. You are for him. He's walking with you, you walk with him. He honors your prayer, you honor his word. He loves you, love him too. He makes your word precious. Make his word also precious. God does not compare you with other people. He loves you. You don't compare him with any other God. Just love him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now say, in Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name I pray. Let that come to your heart. Say that again. In Jesus' name I pray. Say that again. As you go, if any demon stands before you, that's all, that's all you say. Say that again. In Jesus' name, I pray. Mountains will flee before you. Sickness will be healed by your prayer. Demons will go out by your prayer. You are anointed. I am anointed. You know, any time in the past, 
hold on, hold on. Let me talk to you because you are getting something you never got. Yeah. Any time in the past, I saw Maurice Erdo. He's not gone to glory. And I see the way he will pray. I'll be looking and say, if I could, if I could. Any time I saw T.L. Osborne, he's gone to glory now. And when he, you know, just a word and they are gone. And I said, if I could. I used to say, if I could, if I could, if I could. One day I said, what am I saying if I could? I can. I said I can. That's why now I go to this place, demon, disease, whatever, and I say, in Jesus' name, Amen. I pray. And it happens. That same anointing is now upon you. That same word is now in your mouth. Don't say, if I were Komoi, no, what's your name? Yes. That's who you are. Yes. And this word will accomplish everything in your life. Yes. What are you? Raise up that hand. Father, in Jesus' name. Yes. You are no partial God. Yes. What you have done for them, Paul. What you have done for them, Peter. What you have done for them. All these great evangelists that we have loved and we have seen. And what you have done through me. Lord, I pray because your word is still the same. Your power is still the same. The anointing is still the same. On every brother here, every sister here. Do it in Jesus' name. Online, everywhere. Lord, I pray your people will not be looking back and looking back and looking back. Those who have gone have gone. Telos Bon is gone. Bonke is gone. Billy Graham is gone. Maurice Cerullo is gone. Your people are the people of today. The men and the women of this hour. Lord, new anointing. New power. New unction, yeah. new confidence, yeah. new courage. Yeah. Grant unto everyone in Jesus' name. Yeah. The spirit began to move something in the camp. Yeah. Spirit of the living God. Yeah. Holy Ghost begin to move in every life. Yeah. Every sister. Yeah. Every brother. Yeah. Every minister. Yeah. Every Christian worker, yeah. Lord, move my Chile in every life in Jesus' name. Yeah. The language of the past, I'm just a woman. The language of, it, of the past, I'm just a child. The language of the past, I am inexperienced. Take the language of the past from the mouth of everyone. Yeah. New language, yeah. new confidence, yeah. new power, yeah. new authority, yeah. new vision, yeah. new faith. Yeah. Grant you every brother, every sister in Jesus' name. Yeah. Gideon, go in this thy power. And go and do exploits for the Lord your God. Yeah. The Father follows you. Yeah. The Son follows you. Yeah. The Holy Ghost follows you. Yeah. Go to the field and bring back fruit unto the Lord. Yeah. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. Yeah. In Jesus' name we pray.